All right, guys, uh, what we're going to do with this next activity is we're going to take what we learned in the notes and actually apply it. Um, so first, we have to go over how this handout actually works. Um, so when you look at this handout here, uh, there's actually four different problems on the front page here. This is one. So you actually go straight across from here. This is one problem. Here's two. Here's three. And here's four. Okay, so there's actually four problems here. Um, so I'm going to do the first one with you here. Um, and then you're going to go ahead and complete the rest on your own. Um, so here, we're going to start with grass. So our food chain always starts with a producer. Um, so grass is our producer in this case. When the grass gets eaten by uh, the deer, energy is going to be transferred to the deer. When the deer gets eaten by the wolf, energy will be transferred to the wolf. Um, so that's our really easy, simple food chain drawn right there. Uh, now one thing that I want to tell you right now, but you don't have to draw it in, um, but one thing that you should know. Um, every single food chain has the sun and decomposers as part of it. So we could actually draw the sun right here, giving energy to the grass. We could draw decomposers eating the grass, decomposers that get energy from the deer, decomposers that get energy from the wolf. Now, since these are a part of every single food chain, we don't have to worry about doing that when we draw a food chain. Because if you think about it, deer are not going to be a part of every food chain. Wolves are not in every single food chain. Um, but decomposers in the sun are. Um, so since they are a part of every food chain, um, we don't have to actually draw them in. It's assumed that they're already there, so you don't actually have to physically draw them in. Um, so you just look at the basics of, of, of a food chain. Um, so once we draw our food chain, now we want to answer these questions over here. So the first question, how many trophic levels are in this food chain? So if you count them, you should get three trophic levels. Grass, deer, wolf, those are each uh, part of the trophic levels. Number two, what is the producer in this food chain? If you look at the food chain, it's grass. So producers will always start off the food chain, so they bring energy into uh, living things by trapping the sun's energy. Um, so they start it off. Number three, what organisms at the second trophic level? So you look over here, we got one first level, second level. So the deer is at the second trophic level. Number four says place your food chain into the pyramid to the right. Okay, so what you do is in your pyramid, you can divide it into three sections since there's three trophic levels. And in the first section goes your producer. Producers always go at the base of the pyramid. Then comes the next trophic level, which are the deer. And finally, the third trophic level, which is the wolf. Okay. Um, now, it's very, very important that you put it in this order. So it has to go grass, deer, then wolf. Um, sometimes I have students that put the grass right here, then the deer, then the wolf. Okay. Now one way to help you remember that it is going to go grass first is producers are always going to be at the base of the pyramid. Okay. Um, if you think about it, if you were to build a pyramid and you didn't build a strong base, what's going to happen in that pyramid? It's going to crumble. It's going to fall apart. Uh, just like if autotrophs or producers, if they uh, were to die out, every living thing would die out. They're the base. They're what holds everything else together. Um, so your producers will always be at the base of the pyramid. All right, number five. If producers start off with 450,000 calories, calculate how much energy the other levels will receive. Label the pyramid. All right, so what you do is starting with the grass, it's starting off the producer, 450,000 calories. Don't forget to put your units. Okay, it's very important that you put your units, um, not just now, but in, in chemistry next year. Oh my gosh, if you don't put your units, um, you are going to be marked down. Um, chemistry was the first class I ever received an F on a test in high school. Remember, I was an honors AP student. I was like hyperventilating, but, uh, you know, about ready to pass out. Um, but what happened was I got every single question right in terms of the numbers that I calculated, but I didn't put my units on any of them. So he marked every single question that required that wrong. So I got an F on that very first test. Um, so make sure you put your units. Very, very important. So calories in this case. Down here it's going to be joules. So you can just write a J when you get done there. Alright, so the grass has 450,000 calories. The deer, um, if you remember, only a certain percentage is going to get to the deer. Um, only 10% will actually get to the deer. Now you don't have to take out your calculator and punch in 450,000 and multiply it by 10% in order to find out uh, what the deer is going to get. There's a really simple trick in math, and some of you are probably thinking it right now. You take off a zero. If you take off a zero from this number, that's going to show you what 10% of this number is. So for the deer, 10% of 450,000, it's going to receive 
45,000 calories. The wolf up here is going to receive 10% of that, so the wolf will receive 4,500 calories. Okay, So that is how you're going to calculate uh, what percent of energy gets from one level to the next. Now what I'd like you guys to do now is go ahead and finish these next three problems down here at the bottom. Um, you can work independently or you can work with a shoulder partner, um, but make sure you're getting it done. If you are working with a shoulder partner, make sure if you know it and your partner doesn't that you're not just telling them the answers, that you're explaining. Because um, telling them is not going to help them, explain to them, that's really going to help them out. Show them why you understand uh, how to do these things. Uh, once you're done with these three problems, go ahead and turn your paper over to the back. And if you take a look at the board up here. Um, the board uh, is going to have the three pyramids. You're going to draw those pictures uh, and then answer those questions. Okay? And then after you guys are done with that, the sub will tell you what you're going to do next.